When you hear the name Las Vegas, what do you think of? Vegas, Vegas. Fantastic. Las Vegas has long been known as Sin City, but over the last decade or so, the city has been trying to shift its image away from casinos, gambling and drinking in order to diversify, with the likes of new events, new sports teams and whatever these are. Even back in the early 1900s, Vegas had this association with gambling, drinking and prostitution, and this includes when these things weren't legal. Las Vegas' popularity increased in the post-war era and its reputation definitely didn't improve. As a number of resorts and casinos were funded by the likes of the Genovese crime family from New York, an Al Capone Chicago outfit. Instead of running illegal gambling rings in other states, the Mafia could run legal casinos in the state of Nevada. By the late 20th century, the old pre- and post-war casinos were torn down as the mob was forced out of the city. Some of these new casinos were more like resorts, that weren't aimed at the wealthy as they were trying to attract a wider audience. So with over 100 years of baggage under its belt, the city has been trying to change its image. In 2016, Las Vegas attempted a rebrand to replace the city's badass looking seal. The new logo would take influence from the existing tourism logo, opting for this bright pink script design, and everyone hated this. This became infamous in graphic design circles for its poor design, and overall it just felt far too childish. After an estimated $20,000 was spent on the new rebrand, the city decided to revert back to the old seal logo, I think. So I think the seal is the primary logo for the city, while the 2016 logo is still in use in some forms like on merchandise, the website and the Facebook page. Plus there's a giant version of the logo suspended over South Las Vegas Boulevard. The 2016 logo was dropped as it was causing confusion, but honestly I'm even more confused. A popular way to change perceptions is through sports. Saudi Arabia has been diversifying its economy, with sport being one of its key pillars as it now has its own golf tour, owns Newcastle United, has been spending a ridiculous amount of money on bringing high profile footballers to their domestic league, it's set to host a World Cup and now hosts a Formula 1 race. Granted, this is also a fine strategy for sports washing. While it's not guaranteed, major sporting events can bring a positive impact through new revenue streams, the creation of jobs and more importantly, tourism. For many years, Vegas was known as the boxing capital of the world, as it hosted a number of high profile boxing matches, until Saudi Arabia showed up. As for other major sports though, it's been a bit thin on the ground. Major sporting organisations like the NBA, NHL and the NFL refused to allow Vegas to be home to one of their teams, due to issues with legalised sports betting in the city that could potentially have influence on the outcome of matches. The NFL in particular wouldn't even allow the Las Vegas tourism adverts to play during the Super Bowl. But as online sports betting became more popular, major leagues really didn't have a reason to shun Vegas. The National Hockey League is expanding. Next season, the league welcomes its 31st team and the first big professional sports league to dip its toes in the waters of Las Vegas. In 2017, the city's first ever major league team was established with the Vegas Golden Knights. A brand new team that went on to near immediate success, and by 2023, the Golden Knights had even won the Stanley Cup. Perhaps more importantly, the team stadium, the T-Mobile Arena, has seen great attendance numbers since 2018, with most matches being a guaranteed sellout. County Commission Chair Steve Sisolak just tweeting, Today is an historic day for Nevada. The Raiders are moving to Las Vegas. This will change the face of Las Vegas and our state forever. Just Another huge win for the city is the relocation of the Oakland Raiders to Las Vegas. This has been in the works since 2015 after the Raiders move to Los Angeles was rejected by the NFL. The Raiders had been keen to move out of Oakland as the team was in dire need of a new stadium which paved the way for their new home, the Allegiant Stadium, which would host Nevada's first ever Super Bowl in 2024. An event that would have an estimated $1 billion economic impact. An impressive but vague number that basically refers to the amount of spending that occurred during the Super Bowl weekend. I guess technically the stadium is in Paradise, Nevada which is just to the south of Vegas, but who cares it's close enough. Plus, a number of new teams have either relocated or been created for Vegas. The Spurs relocated from San Antonio in 2018 and would rebrand as the Las Vegas Aces, and it's home to a soccer team called the Las Vegas Lights FC, being founded in 2017. A team that would even hand out poker chips to players for wins and scoring goals. The NBA doesn't have a team in Vegas right now, but apparently this is in the works. Years in the making. 
Formula One has finally arrived in Las Vegas. After many, many years of trying, Vegas followed in the footsteps of Saudi Arabia and Miami, and in 2023, the city would finally see F1 return. And like Miami, it made several big mistakes. The new track was also a street circuit, which would of course go down the strip, a bit more glamorous than the Caesars Palace car park last seen in 1982. This new circuit made for some good imagery, but not for a great racetrack. Unsurprisingly, the prices of hotels was extortionate, and the race weekend in Vegas got off to a pretty poor start. The opening ceremony featured a big dumb light show, a fireworks display, a drone show, and everyone's least favourite Joker. All the F1 drivers were then introduced looking pretty bored and very embarrassed. Max Verstappen was very blunt in his criticism of the event, saying that Las Vegas was 99% show and 1% a sporting event. Also, in the very first practice session, Carlos Sainz's Ferrari was damaged when a water valve box cap was displaced, leading to the first practice session being cancelled after just 8 minutes. While F1 fans may have been disappointed, the impact on the city was much more positive. From a financial point of view, that is. The residents of Vegas were less positive, and sadly it didn't bankrupt the city. The full economic impact was an estimated $1.5 billion, far exceeding even the Super Bowl. The extortionate pricing seems to have paid off, as F1 fans spent 3.6 times more than a typical tourist, with the average spend being over $4,000. Even when you compare that to a tourist in town for the Super Bowl, that's a pretty impressive figure. Also, $88 million was invested in the public infrastructure, and 7,000 jobs were created for the infrastructure development and the event operations. Overall, the Grand Prix generated more tax revenue than any other event in Las Vegas history. In this case, it was definitely worth the risk. When the plans for the new Vegas circuit were announced, I remember seeing this giant spherical building and all the promotional imagery. Turns out this sphere is one of the more recent attractions, creatively called the Sphere. It's meant to be an exhibition space and concert hall on the inside, and a giant billboard on the outside. Providing you don't get too close, then the illusion kind of falls apart. The final bill for the Sphere was $2.3 billion, somehow costing more than the $1.9 billion Allegiant Stadium. It's undoubtedly a cool looking venue, and pretty unique to Vegas, but I can't help but think that the novelty died off fairly quickly. And like most things in Vegas, it's pretty overpriced. The cost of gig tickets for U2 range from $365 and go all the way up to nearly $600. It may be unique, but for just one concert, that really doesn't seem worth it. Speaking of not being worth it, there's also the Vegas Loop. I had actually completely forgotten that this even existed, after it was opened and widely mocked in 2021. This is also a thrill ride. The initial promise was a futuristic subway system that takes passengers across the Vegas Convention Center campus. This has already been memed to death, as the final result didn't feature lifts that take Teslas from the road to the underground, and it would have made much more sense to invest in a subway or light rail system for the city. Instead, this functions like a very limited underground Uber pickup location. The Vegas Loop is still considered to be a kind of tourist attraction, although you can only use the Vegas Loop if you're an attendee at the Las Vegas Convention Center, which almost defeats the purpose of this being a tourist attraction. It is due for expansion in the future, so I guess the local government does see some value in the Vegas Loop, and it is grabbing a few headlines even now, even if most of these are for all the wrong reasons. With all that being said, gambling and the casino experience are still a big part of Las Vegas, and it's not going away anytime soon. There does seem to be a great variety of stuff to do in Vegas than ever before. Not only is the city considered to be a sports mecca now, the tourism board has been pushing the stage shows, festivals, shopping, food tours, and Vegas as an actual wedding destination. And not just shotgun weddings where you get married by Elvis, I'm talking about actual weddings. What's your name? While that city rebrand may have been a bit of a disaster that the taxpayer probably paid for, the tourism board has been doing an excellent job with several clever ads that have gone viral, which included that Super Bowl ad. You could absolutely take your kids to Vegas, but even now you really don't have to. Are you sure you don't want to go? It'll be so much fun. 